Let's build a horizontal scrolling section with parallax and velocity dependent skew. We're going to use Webflow CMS and GSAP to animate this. Hey there, Web Bay. In Webflow, everything is happening in this section here, which has an ID in the settings of horizontal section. We're going to target that with our JavaScript. And now the way that this horizontal scroll animation works is that we essentially take this wrapper, which is wrapping all of our CMS items, and we're going to translate it the distance of those items. So in order to figure that out, we have to be very specific about the width and the margins and padding that we're using. So you'll notice that my wrapper class actually has nothing applied to it. If I come to the list class, I have flex and it's set to the center left there with and a margin on the left of five viewport widths. Now you can set this to whatever you want, but I chose it to be half of the margin right that I'm setting on my item. And item is really the thing that's doing all the work in this one. So you can see I've set sizing to none because it's a flex child. I don't want the flex to determine the size. I want to specify that myself. And since I'm specifying that myself in the width, I've set 35 viewport widths as the width and a ratio of portrait. You'll notice if I don't have any ratio here, it just goes away because I'm using a background image. So in order for the item to have information about height, it already knows its width and we just tell it, hey, this is your ratio. So then it can do some math and calculate the height that it wants. And then you'll also notice that I have this margin right of 10 viewport widths. Now this is important because essentially what we're going to do is we're gonna calculate the width of every item, multiply that by the number of items and translate the wrapper to the left that amount. However, we also want some space between our items. So I'm setting that via the margin right property here and not via the flex gap. So we can play around a little bit on the Webflow canvas to see what our animation is going to do. So if I took the wrapper right here and I scroll down to the transforms, then I'll just hit the plus button and I can transform it by X here. And I don't know what the pixel value is going to be, but we can see, hey, that's a pretty easy way to get horizontal scrolling, that kind of effect that we want, that even though the user is scrolling down, we use GSAP to say, scroll this whole container to the left. And for our parallax effect, what we'll do is we'll take our item. And remember, we have the image set to be a background image here. And we'll just change its position. Know that I set the width to 150%. And then it's going to be position left 0%, top 50%. And then we're just going to use GSAP to animate this property from that all the way to the right here. So this is kind of halfway and then that's full way. So we'll animate that left property from 0% to 100% for our background image. I'm gonna set it back to its starting position, which is right here. And I don't have anything tiled and it's not fixed. And of course it's grabbing from CMS. So if I went in the settings here and come down to the dynamic style settings, we can see that I'm getting the background image from that image field in the CMS. The last effect that we'll need for this animation is the skew property. So if I come back to our item, scroll down to the bottom and look at these transforms, we can see that there's skew over here and we'll do a skew in the X kind of like this. And we'll be able to get the scroll velocity from scroll trigger, the GSAT plugin, and apply the skew based on that velocity. So let's go ahead and reset that and publish this. Now to run my code in Webflow, if I go inspect the page settings over here, click the gear icon and scroll down, we'll see that in the head tag, I have a script tag. I'm just loading from my machine, this JavaScript file right here. When you get this clonable in the description down below, you'll find the code right in here. Now, before the code walkthrough, I wanna take a quick moment to thank Joseph, Leo, and Marius, who became premium members of Patreon this week. Now, they're getting into JavaScript and they're learning how to code with all of my modules. I have up to eight, actually nine modules now, and I'm releasing a new lesson every week. And the best thing about these lessons is they all come with projects in Webflow so that you can learn all the fundamentals of JavaScript so that JavaScript animations and GSAP can become easier and easier to work with. Anyways, let's get to the code now. All right, so here's our skeleton code here. This is a module so we can import GSAP and the scroll trigger plugin from the Skypack CDN. We're gonna call the register plugin function on the GSAP object, and we're gonna pass the scroll trigger plugin to that so that GSAP knows that it's using scroll trigger. Next, we're gonna select all the HTML elements on the page that we need for this animation. Remember our ID of horizontal section, that's going in the query selector method here and being stored in the horizontal section variable. And then within horizontal section, we wanna look for the item with the class of wrapper, and we wanna look within wrapper for the item with the class of item. So these are all being stored here and notice items is using query selector all. So this is gonna return a node list of every item in that CMS collection. So I'm gonna use gsap.2 here. So we're animating to a specific value and we wanna animate that wrapper. Remember the amount that we wanna translate it over to the left. So within our options object here, we're going to specify the property of X and we're going to pass it a function. And within that function, we're gonna get the values that we need to calculate this distance. So the very first thing we'll wanna get is the item width. And we can get that with grabbing the first item because they're all gonna have the same offset width because remember using that 35 VW width. Then we'll get the margin right. And to get that, we'll call get computed style on that first item. 
We'll get the margin right property of that and then we'll parse int. This is because get computed style returns something like 160 pixels as a string and we just want that number value 160. So then we're storing that in this variable margin right. And then next we're gonna calculate a distance value just by adding one item width plus one margin right times the number of items in our node list. Now finally, we'll return that distance minus the window inner width times negative one. Times negative one because we wanna go back to the left, so we're going in the negative x direction. And then we're subtracting this window dot inner width because if we didn't do that, then we would scroll past our item and it would go all the way to the end and we would see a bunch of blank space. So maybe I can show you what that looks like in just a second here. Anyways, continuing with our tween properties, we're gonna set our ease to none. We're going to create our scroll trigger object here. And what we're going to pass in that is the horizontal section as our trigger. So when we get this at the top of the viewport, we're gonna pin this thing because we want it to stick in place. So that's how we get that kind of sticky sort of behavior that you're used to. We're gonna start it when the top of the item is at the top of the viewport. And we're going to end it. I think that a natural distance to scroll would be the width of the item times the number of items that there are. It doesn't really matter because we're scrolling again down, but we're getting a horizontal action. So you could play around with different values here and see what you like. Next, we're gonna set the scrub property to one. This tells GSAP to wait one second to kind of catch up. It gives it more of a smooth scroll effect. And then we're gonna set scroll triggers invalidate on refresh property to true. This tells scroll trigger to recalculate any time the screen is resized. So we specifically wanna do that here because our items are based on the viewport width. Remember we used VW units. And what invalidate on refresh will do is that any time the resize event happens, it will go ahead and recalculate any values that are function based. So in this case, X is a function based value. So it will recalculate that for us. And we don't have to worry about adding an event listener for screen resize and stuff like that. Scroll trigger will take care of it for us. So I've refreshed the page and now I start scrolling down and I've already got this nice horizontal scroll. And let's see, I'm getting right to the end here and I want a little bit of padding on the end, about five viewport widths. So that's looking good. I'm getting right to the end and then it's scrolling down to the next section. Now, if we didn't use window dot inner width here, let's go ahead and remove that and just save. Now back checking our horizontal scroll. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Let's see what happens when we get to the end here. So I'm at the end and you can see it translates an entire screen width before it starts going down. So it's important that we subtract window dot inner width from this value that we're calculating and returning here. For the parallax effect, we wanna run a GSAP tween on every item. So we use the for each function on our items. Remember that's a node list of elements. And then we'll access that item within the function inside of for each. And we'll call a from to tween in here. So to do that, we're gonna say, hey, on each item, we wanna animate from a certain property to a certain property. And we're gonna go from a background position of 0.50% to a background position of 100%, 50%. Remember, we already explored this in the Webflow Designer, so we know what we're doing already. We're gonna set our ease to none, and we're going to apply a scroll trigger here as well. And the scroll trigger here is special. We're gonna trigger on the item, but we're going to set a container animation. And what that's telling scroll trigger is basically like, hey, you're a nested scroll trigger. And this lets us animate the items within our horizontal scrolling animation, which is really cool. And so we're gonna start on the left right. So when the left most edge of the item is on the right side of the viewport. And we're going to end when the rightmost edge of the item is on the left side of the viewport. And we can set scrub to true so that this tracks one-to-one -one with its container animation. And we can also set markers to true here just to see how it looks. So I'll save that and let's refresh. And we can see we've got these markers here and we're getting start and ends on those left and right edges. So that's really cool. So we're scrolling, we're scrolling, and now we have start and end. And we're getting that really nice parallax effect that we applied with the background image position. So this is looking great so far. The last thing we have to do is apply our skew. And for our skew effect in the property apply skew effect, we'll go ahead and start with a proxy. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky because what we wanna do is we wanna animate our skew always to a value of zero. And we're gonna be doing that and we're gonna be doing that, but we're gonna check it against the scroll velocity. And if that scroll velocity is extreme, then we'll go ahead and update our skew value here. So this proxy is just kind of something that keeps track of the skew for us but we may or may not update it. Now here we're using GSAP's quick setter utility, which is a really cool little function that we can use to set a specific property on an element. If we know we're gonna do it a lot, then using this can help you optimize performance. It's probably not necessary, but the GSAP guy showed me what it was and I thought it was pretty cool, so let's use it here. Anyways, we'll store that in this variable skew setter. And the next thing we'll do is also create a clamping function using the GSAP clamp utility. And the main thing is here is that we don't want our skew to go above or below a certain amount. So we're setting negative 20 degrees as the lower limit and positive 20 degrees as the upper limit for our skew values. All right, next we're going to create an instance of scroll trigger here using the create function and this takes an options object. Within this options object, 
we're going to specify the on update property. So every time our scroll trigger updates, we want to run this function. And this function has access to a parameter called self and self is what we're going to use to get velocity. So you can see that we're grabbing our clamp function from up here and we're passing it self.getVelocity divided by some sort of factor. I just chose negative 200 here, negative to reverse the direction and 200 because if you just used one here, like no div divisor, then the velocity is going to be really large. So we're just dividing it by something large here and storing that in a variable called skew. Now here's the part where we only update the skew value if it's more extreme than the current skew. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the absolute value of skew, again calculated right here with our clamp function. If that's larger than proxy.skew, so what we've kind of stored as our skew value, then we're going to update our gsap tween. So let's write our gsap tween here within the if statement. So we'll set the proxy skew value to our skew value that we calculated here in the on update function, and then we'll animate it back to zero. So we're going to call gsap.2, and we're going to say, hey, get this proxy object that's up here, grab the skew variable that's on it. Remember with gsap, we can tween anything. So we're just tweening an object here, not necessarily a specific element, but what we'll do is we'll tween this object and then we'll apply that skew value to the object within our two tween here. So the next thing is the duration. If the user stops scrolling, then it should take 0.8 seconds about for the skew value to go back to zero. We'll set an easing on this. This will be power three. We'll set overwrite to true such that we overwrite that skew value. And then the last thing we'll do is on update, we will run another function where we're using our skew setter now to update the item with the skew value. And we're just gonna pass it the proxy.skew value. So that's it. If I save, you can see that we're initializing both of these function in its scroll, which is the one that has the horizontal scroll as well as the parallax effect, and then the apply skew effect. So these are both being invoked after the page has loaded. So let's check it out. If I'm scrolling down and I start speeding up, then we can see the skew go up and then down. If I stop scrolling, it takes a little bit of time to get back to its original position. And we have parallax going. It's, it's looking really nice. So hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next.